Good evening, ladies and gentle furs. Welcome to the South Africa podcast. You're listening to myself, Ivic Wolf, uh, with my co-host Scratch. Yo. And our guest this evening is uh, either Sorbet or Bit, depending on which fur suit he wears. Hello. And he's also the creator of Project Ego. Not. Mm -hmm. Sorry, no, that wasn't. That was me. My bad. Oh. I was opening up a bottle Scratch. of coke. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, it shook for a second bit. there, I thought I'd like. I, I I swear, like for a second there, I was sitting here going like, I've just made a massive faux pas. What am I supposed to do now? No, I just accidentally <laughs> shook up a bottle of coke. <laughs> Mobby. I mean, like, the, the, next, the, the next line out of my mouth would have been, he is not the <laughs> creator of... <laughs> no. <laughs> there you go. Forget what I just said. We'll edit it in post. <laughs> we, we don't edit. You know this. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um... Hi. <laughs> Again. Hello. <laughs> uh, so, um... You've been working on Project Ego for uh, a long period of time, so you say. Yes. Uh, Want to run us through the through the idea and how that actually happened? So, like, um, well, it's just kind of something I've been building in my head for pretty much as long as I've been furry. You know, we all mm -hmm. kind of have our own reasons and and stories, and you know, content like that is kind of my reason for being a furry. I like that. Uh, mostly comics kind of got me into the idea. And that's kind of what the project started as. It was going to be a comic that I was going to commission, but it kind of evolved um, after I experienced some visual novels that were furry. And yeah. I kind of told myself, well, this is, this is a perfect way to, you know, to present this project, to bring it to life. So I kind of made the investment and decided I was going to do it. And that was probably about a year and a half ago, and I, and I worked on getting the prologue. Okay. And how do you feel about it so far? Like, I mean, I know that you put it out on Patreon now, and uh, there are some free downloads available, um, I guess, just, for uh, the betas. Uh, just hold on quickly. Um, I think before we, we dive in too far, just explain exactly what Project Ego is uh, to people cool. who don't know. Yeah, sure. So it is a non-linear visual novel, which um, a lot of people might remember Morinatsu, which was one of the first like furry ones that I remember playing. Um, and more recently, yep. there's a couple new ones, um, Blackgate and Echo. And mm -hmm. it's just, it's a it's a genre of, it's a style of entertainment where it's kind of, you, you read a story, but you also have accompanying uh, pictures and music to kind of go along with it. Not mm -hmm. only that, but you also make decisions throughout the, the program of what you know, your character would do in certain situations, and that kind of shapes the story and guides you down and like, gives you a little more interactivity with it. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times they're dating sims, kind of, mm -hmm. which this uh, there's an element of that in this, but it's, it's more than that, I like to mm -hmm. think. Um, I mean, the, the, the first part of the chapter is... There's like nothing of that element in it, as as far as I can remember from what Doge has been telling me, like that specific element, and it's, it's yeah. a lot more about story building rather than than anything else. Yeah, there's it's it's huh? not going to be um, shoehorned in there. It's going to be as part of the story. It's going to try and feel natural. At least that's the goal. It, to, for it to be kind of a thrilling sci-fi story with that element in there. As a as a part of it, as opposed to you know being chiefly a dating sim with a little bit of side story put in there, you know. Oh, I that sense. Although Morinatsu was, oh god, the tears. I mean, yeah, I, I, Morinatsu had that that really good like feeling of of familiarity with these characters mm -hmm. and home and uh, summer of vacation, and it kind of did that did that very well and. Mm -hmm. Again, Japanese styles are where it came from, um, but it goes a little different. I'm looking for a more of a like a sci-fi thriller kind of story with that in there as well. Because let's face it, romance makes everything better. 
sometimes. Sci-fi romance? Sometimes. If it's done well. If it's yeah, done well. yeah, no, because Green Lantern had an element of romance, and that was fucking stapled on, like, you, you see the stitches. You see where the script falls apart, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, yeah. I feel like if you're, if you're in a character's point of view, if you're playing as a character, I mean... There's going to be some desire for romance, for for closeness with other individuals. We all feel it as humans, so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, of course, if it's if it's handled well, yes, then then it's very much worth it. Yeah. So, um, who and I know that we had we had Spazzy on who did mention um, like uh, the fact that she was working with you, but um, who else is actually working on this project with you? So we've got a we've got a really good team. I, I'm so happy with everyone that that, that uh, kind of stepped up to work on this. Um, I myself, I do the writing and the programming and the kind of the directing of the project. Mm-hmm. Um, then we have t- uh, Spazzy, who does the she does the sprites, the in-game characters art. Yeah. And then we have a background artist who is actually a roommate of someone who saw it on Twitter. So it's she's not a furry, but her roommate is. So she approached me and said she was looking for work, and she's phenomenal at backgrounds. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's her name is Dina. She's fun to work with. And then I have a close friend of mine, Steve, but he goes by Edge or Rune Tooth Music or whatever he's going by this time. He's the does the music. He does and mm-hmm. design, and he's he's fun to work with as well. And I've known him for a very long time, so. We, we do well together. And then I have another artist that I kind of bounce ideas off of, and she does concept art for me. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the first right. step of any of building any kind of scene or anything like that. I just talk it out with her, and she doodles what she doodles. And hmm. It's pretty great. A lot of stuff comes to life like that in that really natural kind of way. So, And that's, yeah, that's it. We have a good five of us working on it. Okay. Um, so maybe, I mean, now you've you've been working on this for ever since you were a furry. So that's I I don't necessarily know how long you've been a furry. So. Oh yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Probably. Pretty much right when I graduated high school, I started becoming uh-huh. active. So that's... I'm 29. So that was like yeah. 10 years ago, and then. I didn't really start coming out to events until um, 2008 or so. So, but then I've pretty much been involved with it ever since. Hmm. And um, like, so maybe maybe walk us through how you sort of conceptualized this this entire idea. And you've mentioned Muranatsu and trying to come up with something similar to that, and you had to uh, commission or wanted to commission a comic for it, but maybe. Like how did how did you flesh out from say maybe just a comic to, you know, a full fledged uh, game? Where did where did where did that sort of like idea come from? How did that become what it became? I guess I would have to say that it came from my like joy and experiences of playing that genre. Uh huh. Just I've Morinazzi was was yeah it was you know heartwarming and. Even though it was kind of dirty, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's other, plenty of other visual novels that are that have gotten great popularity, like the Phoenix Wright series and um, Danganronpa, a lot of Japanese uh, mm-hmm. series. Steins Gate is another one that's just fantastic. Um, you just realize like what kind of impact a story like that can have, and and being told in that way, and it's it's pretty great. Like. I personally just have really had good experiences playing visual novels, and so mm-hmm. the thought of me being able to create something like that or create the, kind of that experience for people, mm-hmm. it really just – it's driving me. Would you say that your your sort of genre that you've also picked is a little bit film noir I think it will be. Um, I'm, I'm not going to lie and say it. I haven't mentioned that to the team, like uh-huh. that I want something like that. So I think if you go through each individual character, because there's two two characters you can possibly get to play as, yeah. um, you're going to find that they're very different. And one of them is going to be very more film noir while the mm-hmm. other one is kind of going to be more hopeful. Okay. 
Right. Um, so walk us through the process of, you know, by like a step by step in say a day in the life of your your work. Oh gosh, if only there was a whole day I could devote to it. <laughs> um, but I would say if I could, yeah, a full day would be me um, starting off the day with my concept artist. We would, mm-hmm. I would just honestly just talk. She she shows she is interested in it. She gives ideas. We talk. We talk about a scene, what's going to happen, what we want to happen, and then while we talk, she she doodles, she draws, uh-huh. and then usually after a couple hours, we kind of look at overview what we we came up with, and we decide which of it needs to be a part of the program, and then after that, I generally will reach out to Spazzy or Ty and say, okay, so we want some sort of asset that's like this. This is what the scene's going to convey. Uh-huh. Um, and she takes the references and, and works with me, and we bring it you know, to a stage where it can be used in the game. And, but unfortunately, that's more of like a weak process because okay. it's just a slow process. Asset creation is slow. Um, we all have full-time jobs. We all yep. work. I, so. tip, I tip my hat to you to be able to do part-time game development, seriously. <laughs> well, it's definitely not easy. Um, you know, there are days when I want and I need to get a whole lot done, but I'll get off of work, especially lately with how busy it's been. I'm in, in busy season. It's just, you know, you don't see a lot of immediate gratification for the work that you do, so it's it's hard. It's hmm. well, I mean, you you happen to have a fair few people on Patreon that um, that are supporting you right now and obviously you'd love to have a lot more uh, if if ever that becomes uh, an amount of money that that would be able to help you to maybe do part-time job instead of full-time job would you do that oh absolutely hmm. that would be you know the greatest the greatest feeling ever would be able to you know as an artist would be able to live off of solely that or, or even hmm. even take more of your time, available time to do something like that, which you love, because that's just not the world we live in. Mm-hmm. So, to I'm get that chance, it. Yeah. every artist would love it, I think. Posting your link in the live chat right now, and for those of you who'd be listening a bit later, uh, we're going to post that um, uh, in our video and we'll put it up onto YouTube as well. If you guys want to uh, look at, at Project Ego, obviously there's a, a free downloadable on there. Uh-huh. Um... So yeah, um, and again, I guess yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead. Uh, I I have no. Nope, go ahead. Say. Uh, well, it's go. something about Patreon and like the technicalities behind it. So if it's something else you want to talk about quick, just handle that. No, go. Okay. Um, like with a Patreon, is there is there any sort of minimum requirement that you need to meet from like a posting standpoint for um. Well, either I suppose for people to not be pissed at you, or for Patreon to actually deduct um, the amount that it needs to deduct from uh, from people, or is it just a case of um, regardless of what gets produced here, have some money kind of thing? Mm, so I actually, for the first part of it, what I've been doing so far is I I had it set on monthly. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was releasing updates every two weeks. The main reason Mm -hmm. behind that is because when you're first starting, you you don't have any assets. Mm -hmm. So the only assets I had were everything that I had, you know, personally just paid for myself to make the prologue to kind of show people what I had in mind. Mm -hmm. So, but a lot of the prologue assets, since the prologue takes place, you know, 15 years before the main game, they need to be, you know, edited or changed entirely to be used in the main game. So, the first kind of what I've been doing lately has been getting a good kind of wealth of assets, and that's what it, I kind of showed off for the past couple months that the project's been going. But from here forward, and I just actually started it out, I am going to be on a per-update schedule okay. for Patreon. So I, there will be no charge unless there is a content update. And that's kind of what... I don't want people to think that you know their money isn't being used for something, and I... I can't work on it this month as much as I would have loved to. So the per update schedule, I think works better. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. Okay. Hmm. 
Because I'm definitely, I'm not, I'm not like trying to make money off of this. That's, that's not at all why I started this. So any support that I get from people is just, it, it's wonderful. They, it's people who share, they want to see the project too fulfilled and it straight up costs money. If you want something that, you know, as an artist as good as Ty, she deserves every penny that yeah. I give her. And I, I would never ask for you know, any less. So good quality costs money and, and it's just what it yeah. is. It's the way the world works. So everyone who's donated even even a penny is you know wonderful and I I can't thank them enough. Yeah. I'm actually considering putting up a donation at some point. Uh I have seen it and I do actually make money somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh God! I have money. What even? How does this work? What does this world work for money? What even? Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh? What a what a messed up system. <coughs> yeah. It's I don't know. Oh my. Sorry. I considered you know doing a Kickstarter as well, but mm -hmm. I like the ongoing thing a little better because uh -huh. you can give people. You can give those supporters a little bit more, mm. like insides and stuff as the yeah. process is going along. Yeah. Whereas mm -hmm. Kickstarter seems like, here's a bunch of money, you better finish this come sometime soon. Yeah. And that's just like there's no like, yeah. in the process stuff. Whereas Patreon, I feel like has more ability to keep people in the loop about what's going on and mm. they ask, can uh, ask kind for of, feedback and early access and that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So I mean, you've got a you've you've got a goal here, but what would your stretch goal be? Uh, gosh, I think stretch goal maybe would be about three thousand per update because if that ever happens, I have a bunch of ideas that mm -hmm. can really come to life, and I I don't expect that to happen. Um. Yeah. This project, this project will be finished. It just really depends on how long it's going to take as the support. Because mm. I, I have to do everything on my own, or then that's what I was doing. But you know, every Patreon support that comes in mm -hmm. gives me a little more I can do. Because I only make so much money, I have to live. So, mm. all right. And I mean, so you've you've already got your entire storyline sort of fleshed out already, or. Yes, there there's a solid beginning, middle, and end. Um, mm -hmm. But honestly, a lot of the, a lot of the specific scenes and everything like that kind of naturally kind of comes out as the character as I do the the script writing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there are most definitely beginning, middle, and end written already. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how do you? Um... I don't know. Like, how do you how do you get from one point to the other one? Do you actually actively try to get people to to sign up, or do you feel that it's more of a passive thing that you're trying to do? Mm. How would you feel about pushing people to go like, hey, you know, come spot us cash? That's tough because I I never wanted to want like never wanted to shove it down people's throats. Mm. Um, it is it is definitely a niche kind of thing. Yeah, not a lot of people even know what a visual novel is. So, and again, I, I'm just trying to. I appreciate the genre, and I wanted to get my project out. I. It's it's always touchy. I'm very touchy when it comes to that because I don't want anyone to feel like they have to donate or, or shove it down people's throats. But yeah, when I do get those those people that are really interested and and really want to see it happen, it's it feels mm -hmm. great. Um. I guess I would say very passive for me. Okay. I just tweet about it when I do updates and but I don't expect like anyone to give anything. It's just kind of if it happens great. If it doesn't I'll still be continuing, it'll just be a little slower. Mhm. Mm okay. Well, um I'm all well, cool. I've just pledged awesome sauce. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Scratch, I'll pop you the link as well. I'm not sure if you feel... Not you you sure. probably would feel... Yep. Yeah, there we go. There's like $3 donations, $10 donations, $25 donations. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, and going forward, like I said, there won't be any kind of charges unless there's a content update. So mm. you'll know that every time you donate, there's going to be some new stuff free to play. Hmm. Sweet. Yeah. Love your tags here, by the way. <laughs> they're, f they're fun. Like this, pro this process has been very fun. Mm -hmm. Um, what's your, your current time frame? Like, is this just going to be, um, are you aiming to get out, get it like sort of fixed and out the door by a certain time or is this all like schedule willing kind of thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've thought about it. I've like trying to get a hard deadline on something like this, but it, it straight up depends on like how support goes. Like it's going to, it could take a long time if the support is low, but it, could be done a lot faster if it's if it's mm. higher. So it, it it's such a huge range. Um, I would love to get it out by the end of next year, but I I don't see that happening unless support right. just explodes. Mm. How did um how did you and Spazzy sort of get into contact? And, <laughs> Twitter. And let's yeah, let, oh, just just Twitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I I tweeted. You know. Mm -hmm looking for an artist, looking for some, some work. And she responded. She said, Hey, <laughs> well, I'm looking for work. So we started talking and talking about the project and, you know, I, I explained to her, this is probably going to be a pretty long term thing. Um, cause, and obviously you can't just change artists midway through it. Yeah. Cause the style would, wouldn't reflect very well of that. And so mm -hmm. she was completely interested and, you know, she's been wonderful to work with. Ever since. Awesome. Huh. She does, like, her stuff is just, like, above, a cut above. Like, everything she puts out, she shows me, is even better than what I saw in my head, you know? So, mm. we have a good good working relationship. It's it's good. All right. Awesome. So, are your updates only come out on, on Patreon, or do you put them onto, like, other places as well? Like, for Affinity, obviously, Twitter, um... Um, usually I'll, I'll tell my team because my team of artists and stuff actually have a lot more exposure on FA and stuff like that. So yeah, I'll tell them to post something. Um, and they do and that helps. But for me, it's just Twitter. Huh. Okay. Right. And well, the Patreon. Yeah. I, luckily we follow you on Twitter now as well. Woo. <laughs> That's awesome. So, um, Jeez, what else do you want to talk about when when it comes to this this like sort of concept? Is is there anything that that you'd like to sort of mention in respect to it? Like what what exactly draws you to some of the characters? Let's let's talk about that. Like what are what are the characters to you? You mean like the characters that I've created so far mm. for this? Yeah. Well, I guess honestly, the first they came out of a need for you know, at its basic level and the need for a, pl a storytelling device. And uh -huh. plus there's, you want characters that people in a, in a, in a genre like this, the, uh -huh. a lot of the support comes from people having crushes on the characters like that, yeah. cause that's what they do. Yeah. So uh -huh. you want characters that are attractive. Um, but you also, at least if you're trying to tell a good story, you don't just create useless, meaningless characters that don't have any yeah. kind of, benefit to the story so honestly most characters that I create start at a at a storytelling level mm -hmm. what I need a character to do mm -hmm. I need a character to you know bring the main character you know back from you know back to sanity sometimes so mm -hmm. create a character that's going to be able to fulfill that role well and then if, and then let the dialogue do the rest hmm Kind of okay. Once you have two characters and you have their wants and their needs, how would these two characters interact? You know, be realistic about it, and that seems to kind of work the best. Mm. I find. All right. Yeah. Um, now, when uh, I'm I'm looking at some of your pledge rewards here, and like for say the twenty-five dollar pledge reward, there's the idea of having a minor cameo role in the game, mm -hmm. where there's what fifty of those, and then thirty-four. Um, major roles in, 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 in the episodes. So you're expecting this goes on for a lot longer or um, like what's, what's your, what's your sort of like, how are you going to involve these characters into that, into those areas? 
Well, my ideas for the $25 uh, roles were, you know, people who were putting that much support into the game. <laughs> hey, let's put your character in the background. Let's um, have them, you know, be a side, side character in a picture or something like that. Right. It's a city full of characters, so it's pretty, pretty easy, I thought, to, you know, give some kind of homage to people who would donate that much and let them have a kind of little piece of the, their character in the game. And then yeah. for the the larger tiers, the way that the story is framed is going to be like episodic, so five episodes. And so if you think of like the way TV shows work, that you have kind of characters that are, you know, only in there for that episode. They're not over the whole arcing series, but you uh -huh. can have some, some characters that are there. And so we'll need characters like that. And so I thought, well, why not give that to you know, people who would donate. So those characters will have, you know, full sprites done by Ty and dialogue in the game. Um, mm -hmm. Essentially, it's as if their characters are working as, like, actors. Okay. So I'm not writing the, the character around their character, but their character is acting as, in the, in the city, as who they would be in the story, so. Okay. All right. That's that's actually pretty interesting. I think that's uh, that's a new way of, of of doing things, I guess. And um, so, with 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 that side of uh, with that sort of thing, like obviously, um, like you'll probably get the odd person who's going to donate twenty five dollars and then go, but yeah, yeah, or forty dollars for that matter, and actually try to get you to put a little bit of their character in there. But how how would you sort of explain that to them then? That like, their character is going to be in there, but they're going to fulfill a specific role. Mm. I mean, I kind of, I definitely put that on the, the Patreon, like, there. Mm -hmm. Like, your character, because there's always that worry that, you know, too much of stuff like that will ruin, like, a project. And I don't, yeah. and I, and I don't want the world to be kind of sacrificed mm -hmm. because of people's characters' influences in there. So... I don't know. I would work it out with, with the person, like one on one. Mm -hmm. I, I've pretty much talked to everyone who, who donates like a, any kind of significant amount. So, I, I feel like we we could work it out to a way they'd be happy. Okay. I'm not saying I'm completely unbudging. Mm -hmm. To put something because these people are the reason this project is going on. So, I can't just completely ignore them. But, mm -hmm. I think we would be able to come to an understanding and agreement. Maybe giving them enough cameo to they they feel they feel happy with how it goes, but still maintaining the integrity of the story as well. Yeah. Okay, because I I remember uh, another visual novel that went out on Steam green lighting for a while, and I mean people paid money for that and they are and they, and they got involved with the entire thing and then it it got very 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 mixed reviews, um, involving like a whole bunch of issues saying oh no but. You know, there is actually no choice and things like that. How do you? How do you? How would you avoid that sort of pitfall? It's tough because whenever you decide to make a choice, like yeah, that really has an effect. You're essentially doubling your work every for everything after that. Yeah, because you have to write and you have to write different scenes for if this happened or if they made this choice or if they made that choice. Yeah. Um, you kind of you do what you can. Okay. I can we, say that there's a lot of work that, that goes into this, and it's just how much are you willing to do the work, and and mm. does your story does it work for your story? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like how much can you get away with the illusion of choice as opposed to actual choice? Yep. Mm. I mean, the hell, The Walking Dead. There aren't any major like tipping points in the story itself. More often than not, it's just like something you did somewhere down the line, there's a nod to that action. And uh, You mean like in um, uh, the Telltale oh, game Telltale's series? Walking Dead, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Huge fan of their series. Um, oh, yeah. Mm. I just need to complete the yeah, it's true. Us, though. Yeah. It's true. Every every time you make like a really big change, it's, it's tons of work. So mm. I can understand when a story only has a few of those or if a lot of the writing is kind of gearing you towards one choice or if it kind of ends up that way anyway um it's just 
it's just a lot of work. So mm, yeah, it's mm. a it's a completely separate branch you have to flesh out. I mean, otherwise, mm. you know, and it has to sort of balance in with with where the story is heading. Otherwise, um, yeah, otherwise you have one like decent ending and one subpar ending, which is I'm pretty sure that's not what anyone wants. Right. So even with my project, you have from the if you play the prologue, that decides who you play the main game as. So you can play as either one of the of the characters and that's an essentially from the prologue on it's two completely separate games mm. so but i knew that from the beginning i was like i'm going to write a story told through the perspective of two different people so but i mean think about how much that is if you're just trying to write one story that's doubling your work yeah. the entire thing so and that's <laughs> just one decision so <laughs> sheesh uh, what kind of software are you using? Hmm. Uh, I use the engine RenP. RenP. Which is a yeah, it's a it's a visual novel engine, so it's kind of a base that you use. And but I've actually at this point pretty much changed everything hmm. as far as the UI is concerned. So you couldn't even tell anymore. Is, is it sort of like I the use same that engine as RPG Maker kind of thing? Or what? I would say less RPG Maker because it's really just line, this note notepads of code. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and RPG Maker is a little more has a nice little GUI for that, but there's really no GUI. You just pretty much write the code, okay. and this and okay. the engine runs it. All right. Let's. Um, if I'm not uh, scratch, I'm not sure if Tempo. Do, which program does Tempo use for? Twine. Twine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think Twine might be a little bit, wouldn't say simplistic, just wouldn't quite fit the, fit the, the deal. Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a person who was actually with us or in the chat last week called Sean, uh -huh. who's actually working with with Atwolf, um, uh -huh. who says that he's also working on Project Ego with you. Uh, I think he runs a publishing company, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, um, like Scratch oh, uh, Aquatic something. Anthro. Anthro Aquatic. Anthro yeah. Aquatic. Yeah, they've reached out. Yeah. Um, I, I would absolutely love to work with them. Uh, I've really had a lot of interest in it. But it, it just comes down to cost and what I can really afford to do. Um, I think regardless of if I can work with them throughout the process, I will probably have them at, do an editing for me. Like okay. overall, once the project is done, so it just depends on how soon I can get them involved. But I'd, I'd love to work with them. Yeah, I've seen what they've sure. done for Blackgate, and Blackgate's writing is—I love it. <laughs> huh. All right. <clears throat> so I mean, uh, what you've you've been in the fandom for? Jeez, you said from 18 to 29 now. Uh, that's a that's a pretty long time. So I mean, but yeah. you only really went to any of the uh, conventions like what two years ago then? Starting off no. with, with MFF? Uh, that was the first MFF I went to, but mm -hmm. uh, I did do FWA and Megaplex before that because they're more okay. local. Um, did FC one year. I've... Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I've been going to con since 2009. Oh, 2009. That was my first con. Okay. Yep. Sure. Um, and I... how, do you, how do you find the... Con Sorry, go. Scratch. No. Go for no. it. Uh, how do you find the conventions? Let's do IVIX first. Oh, oh I, I love them. <laughs> I uh, I like the party, so that's pretty much what they, all they are. Gotcha. I meet huh. tons of people. It's it's a lot of fun. First shooting is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I heard a uh, mention of multiple first suits. Divulge that information. Uh, yes. So I have my original persona, uh, Black Wolf, and I got that suit from Don't Hug Cacti. Pretty much like right after I went to my first con, I decided I wanted a first suit, so I commissioned it like right then. Um, mm -hmm. And I've had that one for a long time, and I still wear them on occasion. Um, but then I have a blue bunny that is about a year and a half old now, almost two years old. And it's just, first sitting is just so much fun. And as a character like that where you can just bounce around, and it's it's great. Sweet. So that I have fun too. Do you, do you find it difficult to be two different characters? Not really, because whenever I first shoot as the wolf, the bit that's just, I just that's just me as a wolf. <laughs> I don't really do any acting, but when I'm the bunny, it's it's fun. You just get really energetic, and 
bounce around and people just are so happy. <laughs> should you should get one of yourself like one of those balloon suit things for one year. Not not that you need to bounce around anymore, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I could do that. I've seen those things. I they, they must get incredibly hot. Yeah, like first sitting is already hard enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Mm, yeah, huh. especially here in this country, like if if and when I ever get a first suit, it's probably gonna be a partial because I will not survive in a full suit. Yeah, uh, yeah, I I wouldn't survive either. I think it's my, certainly my fun in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tropical. Woo. Mm -hmm. Fun. How is Florida? Like, I mean, where when it comes to furries. I don't think we've actually had a, a furry from Florida yet. Um, Orlando is – there's a lot of us here. There's tons okay. of us. Like I was at a party last night that had probably about 50, 40, 50 people. Uh -huh. And that was just like a local's birthday party. So they used, wow. to, have a, they used to have a pretty, pretty good ongoing weekly event that had 100, 150 people. Weekly. Wow. Yeah. 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 Florida oh. has a lot, and I think I it's probably Disney. Mm. Mm, that makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, you, you definitely wouldn't have um, a problem finding something to do on the weekends in Florida. Usually, if you feel like partying. Yeah. So tell us, tell us about this misconception about Florida, for instance. I mean, <laughs> Florida, we reckon, is just a whole bunch of like you know retired old people all sitting there complaining about both the heat, the alligators, and um, what, what else would they complain about, Doge? Millennials. Oh. Is that what people <laughs> think of Florida? I, I don't know. That's, that's, that's kind of my picture that I've always had of Florida. I've, I've been to Florida once, but because of Orlando and um, Disney World, uh, where I've actually, I've actually been there, but I was very, very young at the time and I, I would happen to say that there were a large amount of older people in the area it's probably true I mean the weather is just good <laughs> a lot it's, of the time so it's a good weather for preservation yeah um, you just have, sit there and I've make not had, every day I've what? never in my life had trouble <laughs> finding a group of people that were my age to, to spend time with so hmm. I, I don't really think it's it's overtly so but yeah i mean if i was old and i would have wanted somewhere to live florida wouldn't be that bad of a place you just gotta worry about the hurric occasional hurricane every once in a yeah. while wasn't that one that hit there recently it hurricane didn't matthew? really hit us it, yeah matthew kind of just went right up or the side it, it didn't really hit us um nothing that we weren't prepared for so <laughs> i'm a little more inland in orlando area so mm -hmm. it was just a day off of work and Sitting outside, watching a lot of wind for me. Huh. Didn't even lose power. So. Wow. Florida breeds some badasses, it seems. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, you know, just watching a signpost fly by. Yeah. You know, talking to your friends on the cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> That's America. Well, you know, our house, we build our houses and the structures around here with the knowledge that there could be this huge mile per hour winds. So. Mm -mm. At, we were all right. At Florida, man. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> you you, you know the stereotype, right? Of the, the yeah. meme that was built around it. I, oh, yeah. It's great. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's mm -hmm. funny. Uh, for those of you who don't know, there's a... <coughs> excuse me. There's a... I think it's a Twitter account that essentially just reposts all... Um, uh, like all newspaper headings that start with the word Florida, man. As if it was the exact same person all over, like over and over again, and it's stuff yeah. like like uh, Florida man fights alligator over donut or stupid shit like that, and <laughs> it, it's it, probably it, all true. <laughs> exactly, uh, but the personification of Florida, Florida man is just the best thing. Yeah, <laughs> scratch. We've just got back. a ton of people here. <laughs> that's that's really just what it is. Hmm. Hmm. A ton of a ton of weird people. I think the heat does stuff to some people. Florida, yeah, I don't know. Florida. I mean, we have Florida has a lot of swamps, so people that probably don't 
get into civilization as often as others. <laughs> so, are I, I, I are swamp that, people yeah. a thing? Sorry, Ivic. I keep interrupting you. That's actually a great question. Are swamp people a thing? If, like I mean, Florida? I can't say I've met one. Okay. I'm just curious. Like your next your next visual novel should be about swamp people. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's just the thing, which mm. is like an old 65-year-old man who got stuck in a swamp for too long. And, and when he went into town, they're like, oh, my God. And he's like, it's a swamp thing. And he's like, cool, people are leaving me alone. Yeah. <laughs> they make they make for some pretty severe horror movies about, you know, backwater people like uh, The Hills of Eyes and stuff like that. Yeah. I, Deliverance. I hope I never come across anything like that. Somebody somebody steps on his foot and his first response is, Get off of my lawn! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> all in all, I mean, Florida like, is pretty great. Yeah. Um, the weather is good almost all the time. The only time it's really bad is when it gets super hot in the summer. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, aside from going to Florida that, that one time, um, I... <laughs> The the only other exposure to Florida that I have are from R. L. Stein books and um, what's his name? The guy who's pretty much like budgets uh, budget Stephen King. Dean Koontz. R. L. Stein isn't that Goosebumps? Dean Koontz. Yeah, R. L. Stein with with Goosebumps. He had a couple of books that were based in Florida for some reason, with like these kids who were um, visiting their their grandparents or their uncles or something like that. And then they like run into some sort of mystery because it's hot and they're in this like swampy ass forest. <laughs> um, I, I actually I, I have the book cover in in my in in front of me, but I don't necessarily know which which book it actually is. Um, but that book does exist. I I know it exists because I've read it. But yeah, it it involves cool like story, old bro. people. Yeah, old people. And and kids going to Florida just because their parents didn't want them around. Wow. I see. You know, it's funny you mentioned Goosebumps. Um, Goosebumps has a series of books that is like the choose your own adventure kind yes. of books. Yep. Yes. And those things are. I'm gonna bring that up at some point. Yeah, those things are pretty much what a visual novel is, um, mm -hmm. at its basic level. You just don't have to actually turn to page fifty-six or. You know, if you choose this, turn to page 45. Mm -hmm. um, it, just, it just takes all the math out of it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and math. you get a little <laughs> music in the background as well. Yeah, Pictures, so. True. But I did, I read tons of those when I was a kid and just kind of went, I would always have to bookmark my place, like, because sometimes you make the decision that just ends in a bad ending and you want to, so you don't want to have to read everything again, so you <laughs> have to bookmark yeah. 10 bookmarks. I would I would have about two to three fingers in the in the book from whichever page it was on. Same. I'm just you, waiting. Yeah, would usually just be a case of yeah. like uh, having four or five different like pages, essentially like between your fingers, hoping that you don't die in, yeah. in soon. <laughs> pretty much, and it was just a pretty cool experience. So that, yeah, I definitely say that relates to visual novels. Hmm. You get kind of a similar experience, and you don't have to keep those bookmarks. Yeah. Hmm. That's actually like I mean, and and choose your own adventures was like the very first exposure to feeling as though you were actually involved in yeah. both the, the 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 character's composition, how the character became something, and you know whether you had a good ending or a bad ending or anything like that. Mm. Yeah. Um. A lot of times, visual novels will make their their main characters very like blase or mm -hmm. like a clean slate or like so you can feel like you are the main character yeah yeah um, it, which is great i like when they do that and can actually still manage to tell a really good story but i kind of decided early on that i wanted my main characters to actually be fleshed out characters so you may be in their point of view but they aren't you they right. are their own character you can make some decisions for them but they aren't like you supposed to be like a representation of you yeah but when when you do sort of i know that we've we've heard this from a lot of writers um so far is that like when you create the character you obviously sort of become that character while you're writing about them um how do you sometimes feel if you have to say maybe i don't know uh either break a couple up or kill a character or anything like that oh it's really hard um you pretty much have to make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. 
Mm -hmm. and not just like shock or dra or like soap opera drama. Like Stupid there needs. <laughs> I no think offense. I think if you do something like that, it definitely needs to have a really solid point, like uh -huh. in the story. Like there needs to be a good reason. Yeah. Because I mean, like with with film noir and like the the composition of film noir, like a lot of people, like there's there's always that entire idea that any and every character will most probably die at some point, or go through like a horrifying like a set of events, uh, depending on who or what they are. And, yeah, honestly, uh, you writers probably want to. They do create characters with the intent on having them suffer. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it's true. Yeah, and I mean, who wants to read about like or write about nothing? No, nothing wrong happening. Like yeah. no problem, no conflict. Uh, so. And all is right with the world. The end. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Boring. Most fantasy tales. Except, of course, you know, Wolf of. Yeah. I, I want to say Wolf of Wall Street for some reason, but no, not that one. Uh, Wolf Among Us. I haven't. Ooh, there he does. Yet. He does a fair bit of suffering in that, if I remember correctly. Big mm -hmm. B, Big B Wolf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I still want to read the. There was a lot of death. <laughs> yeah, I want to read the comics that 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 was based off of. Oh yeah, the Fable comics. I heard they were pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? You know, killing killing characters is is definitely a a, a big decision for a writer, mm. and if it's done improperly like it can feel like waste so you got to be real careful about it mm. hmm. of course and, but sometimes it can just like add to the shock value because i mean uh game of thrones seems to be doing well and its cost has like essentially halved since the beginning yeah that's hmm. true but but i feel like the way game of thrones is presented and i, I I feel like those deaths had to happen, like, yeah. and they were kind of in that, like, that way from the beginning. Yeah, they're sort of justified. We wouldn't really call it justified, but I mean, you know, I mean, it's war. Yeah. When people it's die. War. Yeah, but like, like, wasn't that the whole, the whole sort of uh, motivation for uh, George R. R. Martin? The whole idea of <clears throat> Tolkien stuff being far too saccharine and everything, if everyone like surviving to the end of this enormous, horrible apocalypse. Whereas uh, George R. R. Martin was like, it, people die during war. Like, if shit like this happens, there will be casualties. And they just sort of sculpted the story mm -hmm. around, like, with that key mentality in mind. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd like, say it's true. Look at um, something like Band of Brothers, for instance. Like, it's based off of the actual, you know, 101st Airborne. Mm -hmm. And the stories that involved there, and you're gonna sit there going like, "Cool, you know, I I love a lot of these characters. Oh God, they're all dying. Oh God, this one had his leg blown off. Uh -huh. You know, literally like, and and the way that that actually happened is is kind of creepy, because like you kind of sit there going like, "Holy shit! Like somebody in makeup has to get like three types of raises to show this like literal stump, and the other half of the leg just being sort of like connected by these threads of." <laughs> What could possibly be muscle by now? Oh. Um, fucking twitching there. It's 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 like and I don't know. It's not necessarily the fact that it's graphic that um, you know would uh, sort of like and not necessarily attract you. But the thing is, is that it's the fact that it's it's that real and it it shows the 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 reality of both life the reality of war for instance and like i guess when when it comes to writing that's that's one of the more important things to be able to show um people a reality of life because i think we're kind of sick and tired of like like you guys were talking about the the cookie cutter you know fantasy novel oh everything's okay in the end um kind of thing where even if there is, say, I mean, obviously with, with your book, it's, it's, it's a little more graphic at times. Um, and obviously there's, there's an entirety of dating and things like that. Uh, well, I, I don't necessarily call that. Would you call that dating? Is it dating? I've kind of struggled with what to think of it. I've just called them partner characters, like characters partner who will... Because 
the way it's going to end up working is that you, whenever you end up getting close to one of the characters, you will basically be set on that path in the story, mm -hmm. and they will be heavily involved from that point on. So it's not just about the dating. The dating is kind of a part of it. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the dating is a part of... It's part of it's life. Like, yeah. I mean, you're not just some stoic, dead, <laughs> yeah. inside detective. You're a person with life. And how did you actually? There's there's an interesting question. How did you feel about who killed who framed Roger Rabbit? Who framed Roger Rabbit? Amazing. I saw it when I was a kid and loved every minute of it. <laughs> yeah. 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 <clears throat> and that, but the guy's like, mean, that, squeaky voice at the end started yeah. freaking me out when I was younger. Uh, oh, um, yeah, that was Nightmare Fuel on like 500 Five different levels. Yeah. That, that was Christopher Lloyd, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Yeah, that was Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, yeah. He... <laughs> that, that guy's Shave that villain's crazy looking. Shave and a haircut. Hmm? Oh. What the hell? Doge should not look at Tumblr. God damn it, Doge. Sorry. How would you Doge just stop looking at Doge's PC? Yeah. Well, I like, Doge's um... PC. Yeah, when he scrolls, movement. Come on. Okay. What are you, a raptor? Roger Rabbit really got me into like cartoons. Am I a what? Cartoons is great. Yeah, I know Roger Rabbit. Like, hey? There was a lot of, there's a lot to love about that si that movie. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, like that was that was sort of like that was, that was your child exposure to film noir in its silliest form. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It was a very very disturbing film. Watching. Like tunes literally like melt away in a pot. Mm. Uh, uh. Speaking of <laughs> speaking of a film noir with a with a like colorful center, uh, mm -hmm. have you ever played Grim Fandango? I actually have it, and I have not played it yet. I, I did, would. I think it was for PlayStation Plus a couple of months ago. It was free, so I I downloaded it, but I have not played it yet. I would. Should I? Highly, highly, highly recommend that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like. I like I can't stress it enough. I mean the, the the controls are a little bit outdated and it's I mean it's adventure game logic so it's like rub X onto onto Y until Z happens kind of thing. Yeah. So um but it's still Circa Sam and Max. It was LucasArts who made it, so yes. Circa Sam and Max, yeah. Circa Monkey Island, Circa uh the Dig, Circa all King's that Quest. Show. Circa King's oh, Quest. Oh, I still want to play the Dig again. Yeah, King's Quest was similar, I have it but on, like, same computer. logic. Yeah. Yeah. I like that kind of game. They're fun. Yeah, so seriously, uh, I would highly, highly, highly recommend Grim Fandango. Mm. Yeah, I'll definitely try it out. I've just, just started um, Batman, the Telltale Batman series. I actually just started it yesterday, so okay. when I finish that, I'll, I'll definitely do Grim Fandango. Yeah. Cool. How many people do you think work on Telltale? Um, oh, they have huge teams, I think. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's a pretty big studio. I'd like, I'd call it like at least double A by now. Like it's mm. not not quite like Activision EA kind of stuff, but it's, yeah, they it's, they don't put out like sixty dollar games. They put out yeah. twenty five dollar games, and they but they're all yeah, and they excellent. Al always put out shit, yeah. Circa Modern Warfare five hundred and fifty five, uh, copy number three. Yeah, <laughs> you mean uh, like pre order, uh, uh, <laughs> pre order Call of Duty four Modern Warfare. Remastered and get Infinity of Infinite Warfare <laughs> as well, kind of thing. No, but, but the thing is, is you're pre-ordering. You're while pre-ordering the one, they're gonna put in like a small micro charge for like one dollar uh, every five seconds uh, until it actually comes on. Yeah. Yeah, the gaming industry kind of is what it is right now. Mm. Mm. Don't remind me. <laughs> Could yeah, be worse. Scratch is actually in the gaming industry. Uh, borderline. Sort of. I would love to be in it more, but yeah. Hmm. It's fun. Yeah, I like you... video yeah. games are kind of my chief mm. escape from. So mm. and it's fun. Yeah, and there's there's a lot mm. to be said about it. I mean, I'm I'm a big advocate of games as not just necessarily escapism, but as like a medium that you can use to like inform, enlighten. I mean, hell, the whole idea of serious games being a thing is it, like rides on the idea of being able to use the medium to convey something to people that they wouldn't normally um, like 
spend their time on or uh, have yeah. a proper perspective on kind of thing. Hmm. I, I think games can be every bit as, you know, culturally, like, a big thing as, a, as like, a book, like a novel. Of course. Like, uh, personally, I've had experiences with video games that are they're deeper than I've had with any novel. And I yeah. guess that's just could, our time. But, I mean, think about what you could do with VR, like, in the future. Like, yeah. gaming is just so exciting. Like, I... Hmm. No, for sure. I mean, just that added bit of agency on top of whatever your ex the story that you're experiencing, like, adds a lot to um, uh, to your experience of it, to your um, like consuming the medium and making it yours, making it part of your like internal lexicon kind of thing. And mm -hmm. and really, the ultimate goal, like, is to invoke feelings in people. Mm -hmm. And okay. video games can definitely do that. Mm. Yeah, boy, howdy. Hmm. Any, uh, 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 is there any um, video games that you like legitimately like bawled your eyes out at the end of? Like, was there the first video game that oh, made you cry, kind of thing? The first one ever was Final Fantasy VII. Really? <laughs> yeah, but most recent, more recently, I, I I cried my eyes out at Undertale. Oh yeah. Like that game, that game. That's that game, a hell of a game. That game hits hard. But yeah, when I was a kid, um, I played Final Fantasy VII, and I didn't know that Aerith was gonna die, and because I was a kid, I didn't have the internet to spoil it for me, so it, it, it hit me surprisingly hard. Yeah, and like like first first uh, first taste of mortality kind of stuff. Yeah. It just doesn't. It's not what you expect, because you know you expect a fantasy story. Oh, this is the girl. You know she's gonna get with the guy. Nope, she dies right at the right. You know when the story starts getting good, mm. so. Hmm. But there, again, you know, they did it because there was a reason. Personally, I think the reason that they killed her was so that you would really hate the villain. Yeah. I it, think that that it, was the reason they did it. It's a bit cheap, but I mean, it works. I mean, it's like one of the most iconic video game deaths you can think of, or at least I can think yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Ivic, you like you pointed me at to the moon. I bowled my eyes out after that game. <laughs> that was a really sweet game, though. Sorry. Like, not what much game? of a, not much <laughs> to the moon. Hmm. It's yeah. It, it's hmm. not really so much the gaming aspect of it is kind of like scant though, but uh, it's still like a really good experience regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Um. The, the Last of Us made me cry in the first ten minutes. Oh, true, <laughs> true. Oh, well, I mean, The Last of Us, I think, made all of us cry in the first ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> there are yeah. some of us who have not continued playing The Last of Us because of what happened in the first ten minutes. <laughs> you have to finish it. It's such a good game. I, I watched somebody else play it. That's how much I avoided it. I oh. Well, at least you got to experience it. I don't know how far I am with it, but it's like it's not even on my console, though. Like, I'm... I'm uh, playing it with someone else, but we don't get a lot of time to play it, though. Just Maybe. don't. It's a good game. Don't. It's a good game. It's, don't put it's yourself... great, though. Don't... It's great that yeah. games can make can invoke those emotions, and it's yeah. something that I think is a is a true joy as a writer mm. is to have something like go through what you created and and have it invoke emotions in them. It's, yeah. it's, it feels nice. No, for sure. I mean. Um, like after after Project Ego, do you have anything else that you're going to be working on? Um, I mean, I've all, I'm always sketching ideas out, but I really got to see how this goes. Like, this is what I'm trying to focus on. So, mm. I would love. Well, I mean, to. like, it just... obviously, obviously, you've got a bit of a writing brain on you. I mean, why not? You know, furry base, choose your own adventure for now. Side project. I could do something like that. Yeah, I mean. It's just again, I, I want to, f I want to focus as best I can because I want this thing to get done. Like I'm, because so many projects like will just start off and die out and never actually get finished. I really want to finish this. So, yeah. Uh -huh. No, don't let something you've sunk so much time and money into die on the vine. Seriously. Yeah. yeah, I I do not want that to happen. So, yeah, I mean I have ideas all the time, but right now they're just you know notes on the side. 
Yeah. Hmm. Smart man. Um, but just, did it, did it, did it. um, what was I gonna say? Uh, crap. I wanted to say something, but I, it like completely slipped my mind now. I'm a little bit frazzled. <laughs> Frazzle dazzle. Sorry. Yeah. Um. All right. So I mean, we we've spoken a bit about your inspirations and your aspirations. I guess we can probably talk about that. Maybe. Uh, why don't we talk a little bit about you? I mean, we've we've got a little bit of time. So why don't we talk about like, sort of, how did you find the furry fandom after? I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, first kind of exposure to it was for Cadia, actually. Oh. When I was in the. Yeah, when I, was, when I was in the sixth grade, um, uh -huh. there was a couple of girls in my class that were talking about it. Like, they weren't even talking about it to me. Uh -huh. They were just talking about it to each other. And I decided to look it up. <laughs> and that's kind of the first. But I didn't really, like, get it yet at that point. So uh -huh. I, I tried that. I, I met a few people, no one that I still talk to. And then it kind of branched off from my joy of like Pokemon and Digimon and then that kind of led into it I would say huh. and, the, and, and just you know I, internet searches after that <laughs> yeah <laughs> and um All right. and the creation of your personas like is that any particular reason behind, or like uh, inspiration behind them or was it just sort of I like wolves uh I like kind of a little bit of both. Um, I really like. I've always like really, really liked Pokemon, so I've been addicted to Sun and Moon lately. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess my first persona kind of evolved from an Umbreon. From a? Mm -hmm. From an Umbreon kind oh, of, okay. which is great because I actually dressed him up as an Umbreon for Halloween once. It was fun. Oh, nice. Picks? Uh, yeah, I'll send you some after. Oh. I think I have some on my Twitter somewhere. All right. Sweet. Huh. Okay. And um, like I, I, I think I've already asked, but I mean, like your, your exposure to the to the fandom has been what, mostly mostly good. You say? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, every group of people in community has their 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 oddballs or their people you aren't going to get along with. But I, I would say that it, I don't know if I would have had nearly as much fun in life. Had I not, so far, has I not found furry? <laughs> Fur suiting uh -huh. is a joy. Going to cons and meeting all these people. Yeah. It's hmm. been great. What's your, uh, I mean, like, for, for me, obviously, like, whenever whenever we have somebody, like, uh, I guess, influential on or anything like that, I mean, like, what was it? When we had Uncle Kage on, for instance, um, like, I had heart pal palpitations for, like, at least two days before everything happened. Um, like, have you ever had that kind of starstruck moment where you met somebody that you really wanted to meet for the first time? You mean within the fandom? Yeah. Um, I don't think so. Not not quite. Huh. I guess I've just always felt like at home. Yeah, I would say that is. I've never felt like someone that there's someone in the fandom that has is of that like. Because you never feel like you're going to meet celebrities, right? Mm. So, like, like Brad Pitt. Like, I'm just never going to meet Brad Pitt, and I know all about him. But there's, I don't feel like there's anyone in the fandom that, that does that to me. Like, I probably would feel comfortable talking to pretty much anyone, <laughs> regardless of their fame or, you know, infamy, however it may be. Mm. Follow-up question. Why do you know so much about Brad Pitt? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my, one of my favorite movies ever is called mm -hmm. Burn After Reading. Okay. Um, and that's and Brad Pitt stars in that movie. And, like, if you've ever seen that movie, and I highly recommend it, it's something about that movie just really hit, like, struck me as, like, a piece of writing mm -hmm. and inspired me a lot. Like, the way it, the story is told and everything in that movie. And Brad Pitt is a huge role in that movie. So that's, that's why I brought him up, and I usually bring him up. But yeah. I don't particularly, like, have a thing for Brad Pitt or anything. He's... He's all right. Just a great actor. Hmm. Yeah. And he doesn't seem like quite as much of an asshole as some other actors. 
Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure if, if our, any of us, you know, our lives got looked into as, with as much scrutiny as theirs, people would probably think we're assholes, too. Mm. Yeah, very true. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's it's true. Awesome. You know. mm-hmm. No, very, very much uh, is. Mm. And there are some people who choose to, m- like, make their lives something to look into because they just, like, they can't function without attention. I'm not going to name names because the fucking name triggers me. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. S- some, yeah, there's people, people who definitely aren't satisfied as long as as, as many people as possible get to see them. Or... Yeah. That's but, cool. again, you're going to find that in every community. Mm. I, I know a lot of a lot of people and furries included like like self hating furries like furries that just bash furries all the time. Mm-hmm. I think it's because they surround themselves with furries, so all they are exposed to are, are furries. So what they don't realize is that all these all this stuff comes out in pretty much every community, not just furries. So yeah, just people. Yeah. Look, I mean that's that's been my main I guess defense. Um, Every single time, it's like this happens in every single fandom. Like, I mean, <clears throat> we 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 have people who are in other fandoms as well who've come to our side and said, "I can't believe what's going on in all these other fandoms," and then they come to ours and they're like, "Holy crap, it's just the same here." Yeah. And we're just like, "Well, that's kind of what happens, dude." You know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I I was uh, doing anime conventions before I started doing furry stuff, and yeah. Oh my lord, the the cosplay community. <laughs> the cosplay. And I was the about stuff to that, mention that. And the stuff that happens at anime conventions is way more hardcore than anything I've ever seen at a furry con. <laughs> yeah, because I, I I have a a friend uh, who I uh, like from high school who I ride the bus with every now and then, and she keeps telling me about how like how the kind of drama and shit that unfolds in the cosplay community and like all the kinds of weird sort of body shaming slash non body shaming things that keep going on there and I'm like well, yeah see that it just yeah we have the same thing we just gave it a name and that's furry drama yep it's it's funny I just recall in the cosplay community like whenever a new like game or movie or anime would come out like people would fight over who would get to first cosplay like these this character like and if people, if someone didn't feel like a person like fit like the role of that character, then it was nothing but just shame. It was a miserable, miserable community. <laughs> wow, mm-hmm. harsh, harsh, bud. Sheesh. But again, yeah. we have people. We have. I'm sure there's people in the furry fandom with just as much Wild zeal, well, yeah. I guess. No, zeal. I... Zeal, I think. Yeah, zeal, zeal is. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Like the Zelda. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm I'm just I'm I'm working this out in my head right now. If it was Zell and Zelda, mm-hmm. then it would probably be relatively accurate because that would just mean that it's a whole bunch of people going ha ha, yeah, <laughs> shouting at each other like swinging swords at one another for some apparent reason. For no good reason. I don't know. My brain is weird. I'm sorry. I I don't know. Maybe I'm lacking sleep again. Again. I'm always lacking sleep. There's, yep. there's no, yeah. Yep. My brain doesn't shut down. Don't, <laughs> don't do the audio stream yep. tonight. Just go to bed. Nope. Okay. We're, we're actually doing the audio stream tonight, and uh, I, I, it's, it's about time that I played some of my music again. Okay. I tried. Yeah. Because I didn't try. It's, it's okay. I, I had fun. The last two days, I think. Uh, but now work happens. Eh, work. <laughs> I I literally just sit at home. Um, what am I talking about? Home. I sit at work and I I stare at my computer for a very long period of time, and then every now and again my my boss comes up to me and goes, "You want to go for a smoke?" I'm like, <laughs> "Sure." And then we spend more time outside than we do in the office. <clears throat> Sounds about right. So so glad that the kids' about- tuition money goes go to the good place. They're not here anymore. Oh right. The holiday started yes, they, already. They've they started holiday like two weeks ago. Why are you still doing it? I'm office? literally sit I'm twiddling thumbs. That's exactly Wow, that sucks. Just 
just ask to go home. Like, if no one's there, then why are you there? Yeah, that's how I felt on Friday. <laughs> Black Friday, half the people took off, everyone else left early, and my boss wouldn't respond to me when I asked her to leave early. <laughs> so I stood there and just, I think I just played Pokemon for my whole shift. <laughs> nice. Because there was no one, nothing to do, and no one was there, so. Yeah. Oh boy, we At least that. I didn't use any PTO, I guess. Any what? At least I didn't use any PTO, I guess. PTO? Uh, paid time off. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Did the yeah. coal just drop? Yours just dropped, yeah. What the fuck? Okay. <laughs> We're okay. We're good, man. We're good. I, I, did, did you guys hear my? Did you guys hear my last bit? Mm, the, the, depending on what that was. The 900 rand per day parking bay. No. Nope. You have a 900 yeah. rand a day parking bay? That's correct. Why? Every single slot is 900 rand. Wow, that sucks. Building company, building company fucked us over five ways to Sunday. It's amazing. I love corporate America. I mean, corporate everywhere. <laughs> God, that sucks, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm literally, I'm, I'm filling that parking spot. Just because we're, we're paying for it. I, I don't know what the hell I'm doing at work. Wow, 500, no, 900 rand a month. Jeez, a week. No, 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 900 rand a day. Excuse me? 900 rand a day. What do you mean? Per day, per parking slot. Do you have to pay 900 rand to use the parking bay? I, I'm, not, I'm not paying it. The company's paying it. Oh, uh, but... okay, good. I was about to freak, yeah. the, freak right the hell out. How much is that? Like, um, in dollars? About yeah. sixty dollars. Holy crap! Yep. A apparently day? <laughs> yeah, a day. Apparently. A day. A day. Oh. That's Ooh, disgusting. Somebody's. Yeah. It's sixty-three dollars eighty-one cents per day yeah. per parking bay. There mm -hmm. are at least two hundred and fifty parking bays. That's what the I company pays. That's... We're not paying it. That is 225,000 random uh, uh, a day. For the yeah, see. Per month? What horrifying nonsense of a building contract did you people have? We're not going to tell you because that's... Yeah. Uh, if I tell you, then... That's slander. Yeah. So <laughs> six seven five zero 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 zero. Four hundred and seventy-eight thousand dollars per per month for all the bays. Per right? month, wow! For all the bays. Your company got stiffed. It's okay. I think it's payback. <laughs> <laughs> Any case, so job's over. Uh, what do you do <laughs> for a living otherwise, bit? Um, I work as a consultant for a payroll software company. Okay. It's not very exciting, but it's comfortable. And I'm eventually going to be able to work 100% from home, which is very exciting to me. That's a bonus. Yeah. Like, I think working from home is possibly one of the most important things. Uh, I used to work from home. It can get quite frustrating. I'm just excited I get to spend more time with my dog. <laughs> <laughs> like that is like the chief family. reason. No. no, no, no family, nothing. Uh, my family lives in Tampa, about an hour away, hour and a half, two hours away from me. I see them. <laughs> they <laughs> they're there. Doge, Doge, do you have a comment? Doge has a comment. He's begun laughing. I don't know why. What's wrong with Tampa? Did you hear tampon? Okay. God damn it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> classy, classy, Ivic. <laughs> I didn't say it. He said it indirectly. <laughs> Absolutely. And now he's sucking on his very, very thick... Uh... Choose your next words carefully. You. What do you call that thing? Vape. Ah. Oh, yeah, vapes. They're all the rage now, huh? Yeah, he blows smoke in my direction, and I can't see his face for like two seconds. Vape nation, y'all. <laughs> it's gone now. Sorry, is the is like the pressure in our room really low right now? 
<laughs> the smoke cloud went directly downwards. Do you have a fan on? Nope. Ah. Also, it smells better than cigarette smoke, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's actually vapor as opposed to smoke, mm. so. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, uh, here's another question. I mean, you've been in the fandom for, what, now 11 years there yes, in America yeah. and things like that. Obviously, things change, and I know that I've seen a whole bunch of things change over the whole, uh, over the whole bunch of last years. I don't know. I've got no idea. English, help me. Um, but, like, uh, do you think that it's been changing for the better? Uh, do you think that people are... Like, do do the new people who come in, do they begin to toe a line? Does that necessarily happen? Or do we create completely different sort of echelons? With hmm. the I think that regardless of the new people that came in and how they acted, it wasn't going to be like what we expected and we're probably going to feel like we don't like it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's fine. Um Technology's crazy these days. Yeah. Even even from ten years ago, so everyone's co uh, connected and all the time, which is good. Mm -hmm. Cons are getting larger. It's good. I think it's fine. Yeah. I mean, cons are hitting places like uh, soon to be Turkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's amazing. Mm. South Africa. And something hopefully. that I I love about the furry community is there's no basis that it, like like when you go to an anime con there's like commercial stuff like mm. the furry community has no basis it's everything is what we create on our own mm. which i think is just something that's amazing that mm -hmm. exists mm. although I mean, apart from the obvious who, who would sponsor a furry con like as as a company like what, disney hasbro I don't think so. Um, I know, I know like, one year at FWA, uh, it was like sponsored by Monster Energy. Yeah. I remember that. And there were Monster Energy drinks all over the place, which everyone promptly drank half of, mixed with alcohol, and then drank the rest of it. So uh, That sounds like a like such a good time, though. It was a wide. Everyone was wired and drunk. It was great. <laughs> That's technically terrible for your heart. I do that all the time. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you'd know, I think. Um, yeah, dude, 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 yeah. dude, dude, yeah. dude, 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 scratch. I'm listening. I got you mixed up with two of my roommates for no apparent reason. Um, okay. Uh, one of the things that, that, that is absolutely amazing with energy drink is um, that melon liqueur. Melon liqueur? Oh, yes. Mi like Midori or what? Midori, yes. Where the fuck do you find Midori? I've been looking for it for years. <laughs> there's there's a place up here in uh, it's called Kiki's. It's one of the uh, what do you call it? It's a uh, what do you call that? What would you call it? It's an LGBTQ bar. Um, a lounge bar. What? Yeah, a lounge bar run by a transvestite. Okay. Uh, whose name is Kiki? Guinevere Lecoq. Okay. Oh, I've heard mm -hmm. that name before. Yes. And she, um, she, I think, managed to f man managed to find a way to import Midori for the bar. Oh. If not, Midori is probably actually easy to get up here. And I think I've seen Midori up here in Kauteng. Oh, you not suck. Midori, but a melon liqueur. A melon liqueur. Oh, you suck. We yeah. have had this at Kiki's. I might have had it. You okay, might have. Fine. We'll go at some point. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. Melon liqueur and um, like it was a sweetish uh, energy drink. It's actually pretty damn awesome. Sweet. It's very sweet. Hmm. So uh, scratch. Next time you're up here, I'll take you to the transvestic bar. Huzzah! <laughs> Looking forward to I it. I see you cut your hair. I did cut my hair. How's it feel? Good. Good. I'll Not see. like. I'll uh, the back of my head's cold. If that's what you mean. <laughs> mm hmm yeah, I was waiting for that comment. I think you need to update your um, icon, by the way, just to like show off the fact that you look like a lion. <laughs> well, less so now. Huh. Um, question about: um, Have you ever watched Fritz the Cat? Yes, 
I have. All right. How did you feel about it? I thought it was. I mean, I, it wasn't shocking to me. I guess. I, mm-hmm. it, maybe if I'd have watched it at a younger age, but it's fine. I think it's a good piece of, um, whatever you want to call it, art. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was done by Ralph Bakshi, so... Expression. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> actually, you know what's, what's interesting is that there are actually a lot of Ralph Bakshi movies out there that um, that kind of brought me to the furry fold as well. Like, when I was a lot younger, we had... SABC 3 would used to have, like, a kid's movie on at, like, mid-afternoon on a Sunday because the parents have gone to sleep after Sunday din- uh, after Sunday lunch. And you're like the only person awake, and if there's no um, F1 on on SABC3, they'd normally have like a, a, a kids movie, and it would be like The Land Before Time, or, or um, I think one of the the, the one about the dragons, mm. Ralph Bakshi movie. I think it was a, it was a it was a child that was turned into a dragon. Um, no, I it involved it involved some of the strangest inflation that I've seen in my entire life. Cool. <laughs> I, have no idea what what I have no idea what you're talking about. I swear it's a Ralph Bakshi movie, though. Um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, Dragons, Ralph Bakshi. Is it Ralph? Don Bluth, Dragon's Lair was one. Oh, I love Don Bluth films. Mm. I They're never, very, very feel good. Yeah. I never played. I never played oh. Dragon's Lair. Like I keep hearing about it as like one of sort of the quintessential Don Bluth things, essentially. But I've never played it. I'm I'm checking this thing that they uploaded on YouTube in 2009. I'm just checking the, the first couple of words here. Don Bluth, Dragon's Lair, Isaac, Dragon's Lair Part 2. Look at those nipples. Come again? Yeah. People it's, with... I, I just looked for Dragon Ralph Bakshi and Don Bluth, Dragon's Lair, and Part 2. Look at those nipples. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. To say the least. Yeah, I haven't played Dragon's Lair. Mm-hmm. Me neither. Might have to at some point, though, just to like fill in the gaps. Gaps in the education. Is it a game or ah? Yeah, it's like a point-and-click adventure game, I think. Mm. But it was kind of reaction-based, I think. Like they used to have if an I'm arcade. Not... They used to have an arcade cabinet. So yeah. Just like literally, like smash the joystick left or right, um, depending on what action needs to be taken. So it's this like enormous memorization task, essentially. If I'm not mistaken, uh, John Tron. Yep. yep. He did something about that. But he did it on the computer game. Yeah. I know he did, he did Space Ace. Yeah. And then Dragon's No Prey, Rob Cram has one of those. Huh. Any Let's Plays you like to follow? Nostalgia Critic's done uh, done a playthrough of, of Dragon's Lair, actually, with uh, Don Bluth as the as a guest. Oh, sweet. Might have to check that Don out. <laughs> Personally, I don't, I don't like doing the Let's Plays. Um, mm-hmm. I like playing them myself, usually. And um, I would say Markiplier is fun to watch sometimes. Because mm. I yeah. have moments at work where I'm board and I just put on a YouTube video in the background so May I it's pretty fun to yeah he, he gets a little bit like noisy and squeaky sometimes though I feel sometimes yeah mm. sometimes he, he goes a little overboard but mm. hmm. I, I'm still like very much in love with Game Grumps oh yeah, yeah Game Grumps are fun <laughs> I don't know. I liked it when John Tron was still there. I I, I understand your sort of idea about it, but uh, John Tron got the worst out of um, Aaron. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of funny. Hmm. So, yeah. Uh, anything? Any shoutouts you want to do? Um, any shameless plugging? Shameless <laughs> plugging as well. 
Well, um, you know, if if you guys choose to donate or anyone that chooses to donate, it's it. I can't thank people enough. It, it people who want to see this project succeed. It's just it motivates me a lot. It helps me push mm. forward. Um, so thank you in advance. Thank you for all the people that may already be donating. It it means a lot to me. Mm. So I hope you guys enjoy what what is happening and what comes out of it. So. Oh, for sure. Just, yeah, like I think I do have. I've been updating my payment in, uh, info for I don't know how long now, and it doesn't want me to update it. And I want to thank everyone in my team as well. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it without these these great people I'm working with. So mm. it's been wonderful. It's been a great experience. Hope all of us have grown some because of it. Mm. And send our regards to the people on your team. Like I'm, we're wishing you guys the best of luck. Seriously. Thank you. I will. I will make sure everyone yeah. knows. It's weird. Uh, yeah, I think this is about like the time that we should start wrapping up, Ivik. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for those of you who are listening um, on first stream, or those of you who are in the chat, there was Kink and ZA, Proxy Fox, uh, Dark. Uh, those are the only people that I see right now. A lot of people actually just listen but don't necessarily log in. On the other side, on first stream, we've got Bravura, Brastos, Adwolf has actually listened to us. That was actually pretty awesome. We've got a person from... I have problems reading this name. Uh, Reykjavik? Reykjavik. I, I, I never get it right. Reykjavik. Reykjavik. Yeah. Reykjavik. Okay, cool. I didn't realize it was that easy. Um, <laughs> Stuttgart, uh, Stuttgart, Zurich, uh, Wolfel is listening as well. Um, but as far as I remember, I heard that there were a lot of other people who were also logged in to listen. So those of you who are listening but not necessarily in the chat, thank you so much for listening. Um, please, if you guys have like a couple of you know dollars to spare, um, you know, mm. <clears throat> very very good cause to send it through to. Uh, I think that this is. Uh, at least from what I've seen in respect to reaction when it comes to Doge, uh, yeah, it's it's a bit of a tearjerker. Um, you're gonna have a tough time sometimes, I think. I don't know. Doge is a very emotional person as well. <laughs> but yeah, I heard but that. you're you're sitting right next to me. Of course, you heard that. <laughs> thank you, thank you guys for having me on. I really yeah. ap appreciate the chance. It was oh, fun. Well, I, mean, I enjoyed it. Yeah, no, yeah. we also had a lot of fun with you on. We're we're definitely gonna have you on again, maybe closer to release or closer yeah. to the next release. Or if you ever have any like updates on anything that you want to do, just you know, give us a shout and We'd love more than willing to have, to have you on. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. Awesome. So maybe even you and if if you ever want to bring one of your other uh, people on here. I mean, I know that like we've already had Spazzy as well. But if you want to bring, say, the rest of your team and like weird little brainstorming session or anything like that, we're more than willing and uh, accommodating for that kind of thing as well. Sure, I'll talk to them about oh. it. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Fantastic. Thanks so much, dude. And I mean, yeah, yeah, it would like it was really awesome. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you guys. It was great. It was it felt like a whole lot of fun just talking. <laughs> yeah. All right, so then we shall see you guys next week, and uh, Ivex most likely going to be alive and awake for the music stream after this. Yeah. Cool. I, I think. Yeah, no, I should be. As soon as, as soon as I get offline, I know that uh, Bravura is going to help me with uh, setting up everything on this side. Hopefully he's still listening. I saw his name. So yeah, he'll be helping me. I'll probably be up in the next... Uh, 15 to 30 minutes. 15 to 30. Okay. We'll see you guys next okay. week then. Yeah. Cheers, everybody. Mm. Cheers, Bye, guys. Everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.